Hello once again, I am Cosmic, and it is time to review Legends of Eisenwald, which is an indie RPG with turn-based combat and elements of strategy. The game was developed by Aetodux Entertainment, which is an indie studio based in Belarus. Legends was started back in 2010 and then hit Steam Early Access in late 2013. Now finally the game has officially launched as of July 2nd 2015, so it's time to tell you why it's both great and awful at the exact same time. The game is set in a low fantasy medieval world inspired by medieval Germany that is filled with chivalrous knights and their respective codes. The main campaign has you taking the role of the youngest member of a family known as the Landsteins. You can play either a male or a female in the game, however each class is gender locked. One assumes for historical reasons, though there is very little reason in the actual story for this. There are three classes, the Knight, which is a melee warrior, the Baroness, who is an archer, and the Mystic, which is a mage class. Legends of Eisenwald clearly takes inspiration from games like Heroes and Might and Magic in its core mechanics. The game has real-time overworld movement and turn-based combat. Unlike similar games where you have multiple armies in stacks, in Legends you simply control one group of 12 units. Legends creates an interesting mix of fantasy and realism. It mixes low fantasy and history to create a relatively believable setting. Magic is toned down so there's no like doomsday firestorms or sorcerers who wield ultimate power. Instead, magic is limited to healing spells and curses, basically leaving it up to infantry units to deal the actual damage. On one hand, magic being so limited and toned down makes the magic focused units very very boring. On the other hand, it does provide an interesting sense of realism to the game, like you're almost playing a recreation of a medieval tale. The main story of the game is fairly interesting, and the game also contains various side quests, each with their own stories. Legends also contain short stories that can be found in taverns by speaking to the people and just having a gossip and essentially they will take you to a separate screen which will um, show you a large amount of text where the myth can be read in full detail. Occasionally these myths do relate to a side quest but often they're just simply there to expand the universe in some degree. The game has no voice acting which is a sad exclusion for such a story driven game. The writing itself is average with some poor segments in there and pockets of mistranslation. The story is certainly let down by its writing and it's so important to get the writing right in a game with no voice acting. The combat works from a simple turn based hex system that simply requires you to attack and defend. The combat is the biggest letdown of the entire game for me. Unlike most turn based combat games, you don't have any freedom of movement. Instead, you can only move when you want to attack a target. There's no tactical positioning or moving your units out of range of archers. All that is ever required in combat is a few simple clicks and while there are unit abilities and some spells, there's very little in terms of actual tactical depth. The sheer lack of freedom of movement in the combat can really hinder you at points. It means that you can, can't have your spearmen on the right flank just move over to the left flank to defend against a mounted foe. Instead, you have to attack the enemy closest to them. And even if they are a couple of hexes away, they must be cleared out first. It's really, really infuriating. The whole thing is just too simplistic to the point of being repetitive. With only so many types of units available such as swordsmen, archers and priests, combat by design becomes a war of attrition rather than a battle of tactics. If you lack troops, have them under leveled or ill equipped, the battle is already lost before you even began. It's a real shame that Legends combat is as simplistic as it severely hampers the enjoyment of the game. The UI design alone of the game is not only bad from an aesthetical standpoint, but the whole system including the battle controls feels so sluggish in combat that it's comparable to a mobile touchscreen port gone wrong. Now there are several unit types in the game that level up and you can change their class as they level. You cannot affect any statistical change yourself, but units do have each 
they, essentially each unit has two progression trees that they can follow. Each allows you to preview the differences of each. One nice touch is that the unit's base armor and weapon equipment gets upgraded as does their appearance as they level up, which is a nice touch and allows your unit stats to stay relevant as they grow. Now, like I mentioned, the overworld works in real time. So as you move, so does everybody else. Time can be stopped slowed or sped up at your convenience. The overworld brings back fond memories of the Heroes and Might and Magic series. Legends pulls it all off well with great landscapes and graphical assets. While the movement is slow, the developers have done a good job of making the world look alive. Characters have different routines which are also affected by quests and the day and night cycle. For example, if you're hunting down a thief, it's likely that you're not going to find him during the day. Instead, you'll have to go hide, lay in wait, fast forward time, and then wait for him to come out at night. The movement, like I've said, is fairly slow on the overworld, which can get somewhat irritating when you're trying to catch up with a certain NPC character. Now let's talk about the questing. So the questing in Legends is a bit of a mixed bag, both with relatively okay quests and some that are fairly tedious endeavours. The major issue for me was the lack of any meaningful choice system in the game, which I certainly felt was due to the lack of creativity quest-wise. The majority of main quests consist of running around to talk to a few people and then a main fight and that's about it. It's all pretty much rinse and repeat after that in various forms. Questing in Legends provides a shallow experience at best, there is really very little depth to it, however what it lacks in quality it does make up for in quantity. There is a lot to do in the game, and sometimes I basically had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. This was thanks to the vague quest instructions that you receive, which don't get me wrong, I love figuring things out for myself in games and I really dislike games that hold your hand the entire way through, however there is a certain level of obscurity in the game that is just ridiculous and with the obscurity of the quests they were that bad that it artificially elongated quests that would have otherwise been very short and I felt that it artificially added difficulty to some simple things. Like I said the game story isn't particularly bad if you can forgive the odd writing at times. However, there are a couple of uncomfortable moments by modern standards in there with some remarks against Jews and such like that certainly could be considered anti-Semitic. Do I think the developers are racist? No, of course not. It's clear that they tried to reflect the times in the game. However, the small remarks to other races add nothing to the actual setting or the story and they certainly could have just been left out for the sake of it. Graphically, Legends of Eisenwald does pretty well. It's not terrible to look at and some of the character models are done fairly well. The character animations do tend to look off and a little janky on occasion, particularly in combat. The art style of the game could have done with a little bit more colour as everything is done in like a dark shade or a dark tone with very little actual vibrancy. Now that's not to say that the darker tone is bad, um, it, it is mixed but the problem with the overall darker tone is that when it's mixed with the mechanics of the game which are pretty shallow it does tend to make the game look bland and ugly in places when it really doesn't need to be. The most disappointing side of the art I think is the, the lack of character assets with all the soldiers looking like clone troopers from Star Wars. Each character looks the exact same as the next, they wear the same armour, they wear the same outfit um, and it really does break the immersion of the game in, especially when you're in combat with the actual you know you've got like five characters that look the exact same. The soundtrack of the game also isn't particularly bad, um, it doesn't particularly stand out in any way, the only thing that did stand out with the soundtrack was the audio when it bugged out uh, which would cause the audio to go off for various periods of time. I think overall Legends of Iris and Wald has a lot of content but it lacks depth to any of its mechanics. It's certainly rough around the edges, but the game does hold a certain charm to it. It is certainly entertaining and it packs plenty of hours in there so you can get your money's worth very, very easily. 
I think people looking for an RPG with more depth to progression, combat, and certainly a better quality story may wish to wait for a sale before buying Legends of Isenwald. Like I said, it's not a bad game. It's just mediocre. It's got good things, it's got bad things, and depending on what you want out of a game, whether you want a really good story, or you want really good combat, or you want really good progression, it depends on what you want. Um, like I say, with with Legends, you're basically going to get a mediocre everything. Um, I don't think it does anything particularly stand out well which is a real shame because i think that it isn't a terrible game it just it, you know it really needed that one thing that one mechanic probably the combat to just be stand out in some way to really take the game to the next level and that is my review of legends of eisenwald thank you so much for watching and listening do like subscribe and leave a comment and i will see you next time